In this video, we look at using FreeCAD Slice Apart to create matching ribs for a complex RC wing form. For simple RC wings, for example, those based on a Clark Y airfoil, it's not all that difficult to create a set of ribs in a CAD package. Here's an example of a skeleton of a spar and PLA ribs before a foam cover sheet is applied. Simple scaling of the airfoil gets you most of the way. What if you have a complex wing with a mix of airfoils along its length? The Rise Nano from Brainplant is an example of this. To create ribs for this would be a challenge if you wanted to try this airfoil with ribs and a shrink film covering or a foam covering. What follows is a workflow using FreeCAD version 1. The initial ideas were taken from Mango Jelly. He used the context of a hull of a boat and creating bulkheads inside of it. And it's great that someone else documented the general pattern of slicing apart meshes that form complex skins. In FreeCAD, open up a new document and switch to the part workbench. The first step is to import your STL file. Once you've done that, highlight the mess and choose the option to convert the mesh into a shape. It's going to be a pop-up asking you about sewing the shape. Click the box and stick with the default value. That's got us part of the way there. The next step is to convert the shape into a solid. That might take a moment, and once you have a solid created, you could either hide or delete the original mesh and the original shape. Depending on your STL's source, you might find that the mesh is drawn some way away from the origin in FreeCAD. To make a set of ribs, you need to create a set of rectangular entities and I tried lots of different ways to do this. And I went back to the suggestion on the YouTube that you use the Curves Workbench. This is an add-on. And then something called an ISO Curve Mesh. So a first step is to create a cube that's slightly bigger than the wing. The next step is to highlight a face of the cube, change the workbench in order to apply an ISO Mesh to that face. For ribs, we want to highlight one of the sides and set one grid dimension to zero and the other, well, maybe something like 16 to get 15 evenly spaced mesh divisions. For spars, one would pick, say, the wide side um, and set the grid dimensions to arrive at a suitable number of vertical mesh divisions. To make it easier, hide the bounding cube. Use a spacebar for that. And then the mess can be extruded. So go back to the part workbench and then the extrude button. In this case, I chose 120 millimeters and that gives plenty of room around the original STL mesh. What we want to do is unhide the mesh and check that the extent of these extrudes covers that mesh. And now the magic happens. The idea is to use the solid body generated from the STL mesh to slice apart that set of extrusions that we just created. So each extrusion will have an inner part which is inside of the mesh and an outer part for the outer part of the mesh. And the inner part is going to become the rib, and the outer part, well, we just toss that. Now that we've got um, the inner slice objects, um, highlight them, and then you can apply an extrude to them. You might want to make the extrude symmetric. For 3D printed ribs, you might want two or three millimeters of thickness.
After applying the extrude, you will have a collection of separate extruded bodies. Here's a side view. And here's a view along the length of the wing. I think it's a rather useful option for an RC aero folk to be able to create ribs or spars or bulkheads for something like a fuselage. A nominally printed plane form could then be reimagined as a traditional materials and coverings, or some hybrid. Or you might want to use the software to design a wing and then could then follow this sequence to form matching ribs. Enjoy and good luck.